What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. And in this episode, I got some bad news for you guys because my Yamaha R6 was stolen last night. Yes, you heard correctly. And I got a story to share with you that you may find interesting. And hopefully this prepares you for locking up your bike in case you're in the same situation as I am. But luckily, I have another bike. Yes, I do. I got my Street Triple RS. And I love this bike, man. I'm glad I have something else to ride in the interim. But uh, let's hop on in and go for a ride and talk. Because I gotta get all this information out of me. It's been kind of stressful lately. I gotta tell you, me and that Yamaha R6 have bonded very, very well. I got to know the bike so well. I pushed it to its limits and it respects me and I respect it very, very much. I know every inch and every crevice of that bike. I kept it in perfect condition. I made sure that bike was clean after every third or fourth ride. I would spit shine it. Well, not with real spit, but you know what I mean. <laughs> And I generally kept the bike in perfect order. I would always uh, clean the chain and lube it after three to 500 miles. And it had zero scratches on it, none whatsoever. And you know what? They recovered the bike. Thank you so much. A huge shout out to California Border Patrol for fighting the motorcycle. Your service is absolutely appreciated. So thank you so much if you're watching this video. Yes, they have my YouTube channel now. They know who I am because the QR code for my YouTube channel was on the back of my R6. So uh, they, the CBP, CBP knows who I am and the thieves who stole my motorcycle will probably know who I am as well. They obviously know where I live, but they know that I do YouTube and who knows, they might even be watching this video. But I can't stop that from making more videos Life goes on, hopefully they get the punishment they deserve. Life is gonna go on for me and I hope it does for you if, you're, if you ever fully find yourself in the same situation. So as I was saying, the motorcycle was in perfect condition and I didn't have a single scratch on it. And I understand that it was stolen, but what pisses me off mostly is that it wasn't me who laid the first scratch on that bike. It was the damn thieves. I got the bike back and it was downed obviously because the whole side is screwed up. It's all scratched up. For insurance purposes, just until everything is squared away, I'm not gonna post any pictures or videos about the bike, but the entire side of the bike is all scratched up. The tank is all scratched up. The right side of the handlebars, the right mirror, and also the back fender, as well as the exhaust tip. It's all screwed up. The motorcycle is currently at a shop getting an insurance quote and I talked to the guy and he's like, well, to get your bike back to the order that it was before, because it was in pristine condition, it's gonna be pretty much riding the entire bike off because all that stuff is expensive to get it replaced OEM quality stuff. So at this point, I'm not really sure if it's gonna be worth fixing the bike up or just getting a brand new one. I've been looking around and there are a whole bunch of 2020 R6s and I could potentially buy a brand new one with the money that I'll recover from insurance. But I'm not gonna speak too far ahead because I really don't know what the outcome is gonna be. This only happened a day ago. The adjuster as well as the shop that it's in right now haven't really talked amongst each other. So I'm gonna wait until I give you a further update, but there will be an update. But for now, let's continue back to what I was talking about before as far as the story about how it got stolen because it's quite bizarre. I bought a $200 lock for the motorcycle. This was an Avis lock. And I did so much research and I read so many online reviews for it. The lock is pretty much impenetrable. It's, impo it's almost impossible to pick the lock and it's almost impossible to axle grind the lock as well. I watched several videos and I just couldn't find someone defeating the current lock that I had. It was an Abus Extreme 59 or Abus 59 Extreme. I forgot what it, exactly what it's called, but it's a pretty tw tough lock. A 20 out of 20 security is, is what it's rated for. At approximately 4.30 in the morning, I started receiving phone calls from California Border Patrol. And I usually keep my phone off at night. I put it on vibrate because, you know, you get a whole bunch of spam calls and uh, I just don't want to be bothered. So these guys were calling me from like 4.35 o'clock, but since they couldn't reach me, 
California Border Patrol knocked on my door. I don't know how they got inside the building because I live in a condo. I'm looking through the peephole and there's this gigantic, big, burly guy. He must have been like six foot six tall. And you know, I'm not such a tall guy and I got no shoes on and I'm like in my underwear just coming out. Like I got boogies on my eyes, rolling out of bed, hearing this guy like thumping on my door. Like, who the f is this? I've never had this situation happen before since I've been living here. So the guy's like, California Border Patrol, are you uh, so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, we recovered your motorcycle. It's by the border. And here I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm just waking up. My brain isn't working because my brain doesn't work before I drink coffee as an FYI. Is, am I alone, by the way? <laughs> or or are, are you guys the same way? Do you have to drink coffee before your brain works? Because when the guy told me that he's from California Border Patrol and my bike is by the border, for a split second, I thought somebody was knocking on my door to ambush me or something. <laughs> So, anyways, after that, I open the door, I talk to the guy, and he starts showing me pictures of my bike and all the damages in them, and that's when the light bulb lit up in my head, and I'm like, oh my god, are you serious? So he's like, your bike is by the border, it's gonna be impounded if you don't pick it up, but we recovered it, it's gonna be $300 if you want it impounded, if not, you gotta come and pick it up. I closed the door, I rushed in, I got dressed, and here I am walking out with California Border Patrol to get my car, to rush down to U-Haul, to rent a U-Haul at 7 o'clock in the morning, and then drive all the way up to the border to pick up my bike, and mind you, I didn't have my coffee, so I was pretty grumpy, <laughs> and pissed off, and upset that my bike got stolen. But I was very happy that they recovered it. So once again, thank you so much to California Highway Patrol for doing a fantastic job and picking up my bike. Your service is appreciated, ladies and gentlemen. So we got to U-Haul, picked up the U-Haul, and we're driving uh, all the way down to the border to pick up the bike. And a lot of things are going through my mind, like this sucks, now I gotta go through insurance. I wonder what condition the bike is in. I wonder if I'll be able to ride it again. You know, all these thoughts are going through my head and I'm just, you know, I haven't really woken up at this point. I get to the border and I look at the bike and it's pretty much all screwed up. Woo! <laughs> oh man, I love this bike. Did I tell you guys I effing love this bike? Yes, sir, I do. I'm glad I still have this one at least. So back to my story. I get there, the bike is in pretty bad shape. It's been molested pretty badly. The ignition is cut off. The key doesn't even turn. And uh, everything is pretty much scuffed up, beat up looking. Even the seat, I don't know how they scratched up the seat. But the back seat is all scratched up. It's just not in good condition and I don't really feel good about the whole situation. I signed the paperwork get the police report done and I get out of there and I'm coming back home. It's not really a good feeling. So I dropped off the bike at the shop and it's currently getting a repair estimate. I already spoke with AAA and AAA is working on things. They're gonna work with the adjuster. But I really wish I didn't have to go through this uh, situation. I don't want you to go through the same situation as I did. So if you live in San Diego and you live in one of those nice condos and you got your bike out in the open, uh, you better protect it somehow because now I'm considering putting both my bikes inside of a storage unit until I figure things out. Me and that R6 had a really good time, man. The last time I tracked the bike, it was on Friday. It was the fastest I've ever, ever ridden. I've done about 15 or so track days since I started riding. I've done quite a few, a lot actually. Riding the R6 is just one of those motorcycles is so confidence inspiring. Anyways, it's an awesome motorcycle. I love it. I'm not really sure what direction my current R6 is gonna go towards. Is it gonna be totaled? I don't really know. Am I going to repair it? I don't know. Let's see what happens and how much everything costs in the end. And I think that's gonna be the final determination if it's gonna be totaled or not. But regardless, if it's able to be repaired, I will repair it. If it's not able to be repaired, maybe I'll come back to you guys and ask for your advice if you think I should buy another bike or not, or I should get another R6. 
there has not been a single regret in buying the R6. I love it, but when the time comes, hopefully uh, in the next maybe week or two, whenever that time comes, I'll definitely come to you guys with advice. Or if you're interested, for now, make a comment down below if you think I should keep it or not. But we can definitely continue this conversation when it's a little bit more appropriate. I don't think I ever brought you guys here before. This is called La Jolla Shores. Uh, it's a beautiful beach here. Nice surrounding areas. Yeah, this is really pretty. Haven't been down here in a long time. But anyways, that's the entire story, guys. Uh, I wish I didn't have to give it to you, but I have to give you guys the news. Until the bike is repaired or I get another one, unfortunately, you may not be able to see more R6 content. And I still had more work to do on that bike, too. It just sucks, though, because if I do get another R6, that means I gotta start all over again with modding the bike. It's just extra hassle, and I wish I didn't have to go through that. But it is what it is. I'm just happy that they recovered the motorcycle and got the thief who stole the bike. So I'm gonna give you guys additional updates as they come. But for now, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't watched the R6 video that I posted uh, on Wednesday, make sure to go check that video out because that's the last time I rode her. And we had a blast, man. Me and that R6 had a blast. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Take care. Ciao for now.